to one and all. Uh, I heartily welcome uh, respected uh, Dr. Chandrakant Sharma sir, Dean, uh, Faculty of Agriculture and Principal College of Agriculture for uh, uh, giving us uh, consent for organizing this particular webinar. And I again uh, welcome to Dr. Dinkar Gaikwad, who is uh, our guest speaker. Uh, as all of us know that farming in recent years has been changed considerably and a lot of new techniques in the cultivation of agriculture crops uh, are coming up and the agriculture is uh, boosting up the India's economy in different uh, way. So all over the world different techniques have been evolved over the years and nowadays uh, we are uh, shifting towards the digital or uh, you can say the ICT based agriculture also. So in this concern we are going to have today an expert uh, to discuss about the hydroponics farming for exotic vegetables. Uh, before uh, be dealing with the webinar, I would like to introduce our guest speaker, uh, Dr. Dinkar Gaikwad, who has uh, been uh, working currently as assistant professor in the Department of Plant Physiology, MS Swaminathan School of Agriculture uh, under Centurion University of Technology and Management, Perlek Mundi, Odisha, India. Uh, he got his bachelor's degree in horticulture from Mahatma Phule, Prashi Vidyapit, Rahuri, Maharashtra, filed postgraduate and doctorate degrees from Vidhan Chandra Krushi Vishwavidyalay, Mohanpur, West Bengal in the discipline of plant physiology. He worked uh, his doctoral research on betel wine uh, crop uh, regarding physiological responses to light environments, organic and inorganic supplements and standardization of protocol for mutagenesis. This was the work he has carried out for his PhD degree and uh, he has opportunity to work as senior research fellow in the project entitled Formulation and Validation of Dust Testing Guidelines for Betel Wine which was sponsored by PPV FRA New Delhi that is Protection of Plant Varieties and Farmer Right Authority New Delhi Government of India for three years. So, uh, he is having more than six years of teaching and research experience and taught several courses to PG, UG and PhD programs, uh, published a book on protected cultivation and smart agriculture. Uh, he has published more than 20 research articles and uh, book chapters in nationally and internationally renowned our uh, journals. Uh, presently, he is working on the hydroponics techniques for growing exotic vegetables and visited uh, Western Sydney University in Australia uh, for the same reason and he got uh, very much uh, ideas after the visit of uh, to the Australia and uh, now I request our chief guest speaker uh, Dr. Gaikwad to deliver his talk and enlighten us on the topic of hydroponics. Please sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you Dr. Bale uh, for such a nice introduction. So please uh, I request, uh, 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 please allow me to share the screen. So I'll start my presentation. I hope you are yes, seeing this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So, uh, thank you once again. So, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank organizer for inviting me as a guest speaker on this webinar. So, good evening all. Today we'll start a, a little bit interaction about the, how this uh, hydroponics farming or uh, what is the opportunity of this hydroponic farming for exotic vegetables in the India because uh, uh, India is one of the uh, 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 what we can, agriculture dominated country where a lot of scope is there for the agriculture. So let's discuss a little bit about the hydroponics. So first of all, what is hydroponics? Mainly whenever we are talking about hydroponics, uh, most of the people, they define this hydroponics wrongly. They will say simply uh, hydroponics is a, a growing of a plant with water. Some will say it is a growing of plants without soil, uh, only with water. But actually, technically, growing of plants with water is not possible. So we can say growing of plant with suitable amount of nutrients because plant requires some nutrient, nutrition. Almost we know uh, plant requires almost 17 essential elements. Uh, few are the macro, few are the micro. So uh, this water should have 
all the uh, means uh, combination of this macro and micro nutrients in that uh, nutrient solution then only plant can survive so everyone is saying this hydroponic is a, a recent or modern technology uh, it is a advanced technology but when you go to the past you will find it is not a modern technology it is one of the oldest technology uh, uh, you will find so let's go a little bit into the past uh, uh, one of the first incidents you will find that uh, this uh, water culture or hydroponics it is a uh, hanging gardens of babylon which is one of the seventh wonder of the ancient world uh, somewhere it is uh, somewhere in is iraq and this garden is built by uh, the king of that particular empire uh, almost see you can say 600 years before the christ so that was the first instance that uh, we can come to know that plants can be growing water Another one in, uh, incidence is uh, floating gardens of Aztecs. Aztecs is actually a, a tribal community, uh, which is uh, which was there in the Mexico, and there were uh, highly disputes between the, their neighbors and this tribal community. So what they did, their neighbors, they simply uh, denied some arable lands to this um, tribal peoples. So what they do, did, because if land is not there for their survival, so simply they started living. On the ponds, they just built some structures of bamboos and some grasses, and they started living on the ponds or lakes. And also, they started growing their own vegetables on the uh, ponds. So, technology was new. Some later, some several, several modifications were, were there, but actually, we cannot say it is a new or mo modern technology. These instances are saying that it is actually a very old technology. But this technology become more popularized when this gentleman you can see on the screen uh, William Dr William Garrick the professor of University of California he published the series of articles uh, between 1920 to 1930 on the hydroponics and then this term hydroponics got popularized many articles he published on the hydroponics uh, when coming about India uh, in India you'll find the first reference of hydroponics is almost in 1946 uh, the first research trials was conducted by the uh, Kaling Pong research station Darjeeling district of the West Bengal. That was the first inc uh, uh, incidence that in India we started the hydroponics. So, before, means, uh, without wasting any time, directly jump to the uh, uh, what are the different types of hydroponics, how uh, plants can be grown, what is the requirement, uh, or what is the optimum condition which is required for the growing those plants. So, hydroponics it has several systems uh, which is uh, widely used for the different vegetables. So, first common system that is used. For hydroponics is a nutrient film techniques so you can see in the screen nutrient film technique is you can see there will be some reservoir which will having nutrient solutions so that nutrient solution will be lifted through the pump and they will be circulated through some channels there will be some gentle slope on the channels and uh, this nutrient solution it will be again recollected back to the reservoir in this process what will happen but whatever nutrient solution is there, which is obviously a combination of all those 17 elements, it will be circulated to the all root systems and they will get enough amount of uh, exposure to the nutrients and plant will survive in this system. The drawback of this system is as there is slope, in case sometime there is electricity failure. So there will be no stagnant water will be there in this gully. So a lot of uh, drawbacks you will find uh, in this system, but still it is rated one of the high uh, uh, rated high as a hydroponics technology for the most of the vegetables, though it is having uh, several um, uh, drawbacks, several barriers. Uh, so this is one technique. Simply, water is recirculated back to the nutrient solutions. So here, no need to give enough amount, uh, additional amount of oxygen because circulation, uh, circu this whatever water is circulation, uh, circulation is going on, it carries enough amount of oxygen. So no need to provide the additional oxygen uh, for this system. Uh, another system is a deep water culture. So here you can see. One container will be there. Uh, on container, just to support the plant, you have to use some uh, support system. Probably um, you can use the thermocols, and you can fix the plant here on the systems. But as here water is stagnant, you have to give some additional uh, additional air because in stagnant water, concentration of oxygen may drop down. So you have to provide the additional oxygen. So how you can give the additional oxygen? Simply you can use the aquarium pumps. Uh, Aquarium pump, so uh, it is not that much costly. Simply one, one fifty to two hundred rupees, you will get the aquarium pumps, and uh, uh, your purpose will be fulfilled. Simply, just container is there. You use additional source of oxygen, 
use some support system and grow your plant. One of the simplest technique, uh, no means uh, no technology, no some uh, technical difficulties here. So simply you can uh, uh, use this deep water culture for again, uh, most of the vegetable crops. Another one technique is a band flow system. A band flow system, what happens in this system? Uh, see, uh, nutrient solution is again lifted in uh, to the uh, container. So once this nutrient solution reach up to the certain level, uh, suppose you can see on the cursor. So suppose 50%, 50% of the uh, nutrition will be there in the reservoir and excess water will be again recollected back in the reservoir. So water level will be, some water level will be maintained in this cell. Even suppose electricity failure, still some amount of water will be there. So your plant may not die immediately. Uh, here you can see in NFT, if you cannot resolve the electricity issue, chances of uh, your plant means plant may die immediately if you have not uh, solved that problem quickly. But here, even say for uh, six to eight hours, there is a, that problem is not sorted out. Still, it will have some sufficient amount of water. So plant will survive, they will not die. Another one technique is aeroponics. Uh, so you can see one of the major difference in this aeroponic system is, uh, is all these three systems you can see, roots are exposed to the nutrient solution in all system. But here you can see, uh, roots are not coming in contact with the nutrient solution. See, some mister is fixed here, and this mister, it will spray nutrient solution on the roots at frequent interval, say uh, 30 minute interval, sorry, 30 seconds interval or one minute interval. So just misting will be there. Roots will not come in contact with the direct nutrient solution. Uh, drawback of this system is uh, actually it is highly susceptible to the uh, technology because uh, suppose sometime uh, uh, motor that mister may fail, sometime electricity may fail. So, and it will use a lot of uh, nutrient solution as compared to other three systems. So these are the four systems. A few more systems are there, that is Dutch Beckett system. Whatever discussed we have, uh, whatever uh, technology we have discussed in the previous slides, that are, those systems are mostly suited for the particularly leafy vegetables. But if you want to grow for say cucumber or some capsicum, so those type of plants, those NFT or ebb and flow, deep water culture is not suited. So at that, in that case, you have to use the Dutch bucket system. So what is the function of Dutch bucket system? You can see here, Dutch buckets are there. Uh, they have arranged. Uh, 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 and you can see this is the inlet. This inlet will provide the nutrient solution. Some drippers will be fixed here. And through these drippers, nutrient solution will be circulated to the plants. And excess water will be collected to the, this outlet. Again, this outlet will meet to the container. And again, excess water will be recollected. So here, with help of a drip irrigation, we can provide the nutrient solution to the plants, uh, particularly plants like cucumber, uh, capsicum. Uh, you can use this type of system. Even you can see here capsicum. Another one system you can use as a grow bag, same as the batch bucket system. So you can use the nutrient solution in the form of uh, drip irrigation. So excess water, again, it will be collected through the drain. You can collect that ex if uh, some uh, excess nutrient is there, you can collect through the drain. And, uh, uh, these are the few systems that is you know, widely used for the hydroponic system. Now, let's see, uh, in most of the cases you can see uh, in this system, sometime you need some growing media, sometime you don't need. Because uh, in few leafy vegetables, plant required some support. Not purpose is not to provide any nutrition, but just to roots to get some in a sufficient amount of support. So then only they will uh, grow profusely. So we need to choose appropriate amount of growing medium. So what a growing medium can be used in a hydroponics? So widely used growing medium is a rock wool. Rock wool is actually sterile. It is very porous, non-degradable. And uh, particularly, it is a mixture of granite and limestone. And they, uh, this uh, limestone and granite will be heated or superheated, you can say. It will be melted. And some sugar candy-like substance will be formed. You can see him uh, see in the picture. So, in most of the commercial farms, you will find the rock wool as the growing media because it is very, uh, chances of contamination will be very less in case of rock wool. So if you want to go for the exotics, you must go for the rock wool. If you want to go for the no normal seasonal crops like say uh, spinach or um, the coriander, no need to go for this rock wool. Simply you, you can use the material like a cocoa peat or a cocoa coir. Say, and this cocoa peat is, is prepared from the outer husk of the coconut, uh, coconut coirs. So, now you can, people may argue that uh, uh, how you can use the uh, organic material, uh, particularly this cocoa peat. 
because chances will be there that this cocoa peat may provide some amount of nutrient. But in case of cocoa peat, if you use the sterile and after um, uh, uh, sterilization, we have to use this one. But decomposition rate of this cocoa peat is very slow. As decomposition rate is very slow, so chances of getting nutrient from that organic compost. Uh, sorry, actually, I lost some connection. Yes, you are audible. Hello. Uh, yes, you are audible. Please. Hello, am I? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, actually, uh, I have a question. One minute, so I'll. There is power cut here. So, uh, just uh, some uh, issues are there uh, towards the guest speaker. Uh, let's check it. Okay, please share the screen, sir. Yes, yes sir. Thank you. There was power cut. Sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, can you hear me? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Not audible. Not audible, please, sir. Check your okay, audio. Ah, yes. now, now is it okay? Yes, okay. yes. Okay. Ah. So, uh, as this uh, cocoa pit, it takes a lot of time to decompose. So, chances of getting nutrient from that cocoa pit is very minimal. So, uh, we can use uh, cocoa pit uh, just purposes, again, just to provide the uh, support uh, to any uh, nutrient solution. Uh, so, uh, another one medium is a perlite. Uh, perlite actually it is uh, mainly composed of mineral nutrient uh, that is uh, again it will be uh, superheated and once you will provide heat it will uh, expand like a popcorn material so and it is very lightweight porous and absorbent and it has tendency to neutral the ph of your solution so perlite either you can you can use it separately or you can mix with some other medias because sometimes now uh, sometimes this uh, perlite uh, may block your uh, system because it is a very porous it, it will it will float on the nutrient solution so if you are using perlite in nft uh, it may block your uh, nft channels so better perlite you can use for the grow back system or a dutch bucket system uh, so you can use the it is uh, as solely or you can mix with some other growing mediums uh, another one medium is a vermiculite vermiculite is again it is also um, similar to the uh, perlite it is a silicate minerals. It also expands when exposed to the heat, uh, very high heat. And uh, uh, the main property of this vermiculite that it has a tendency 
or it has a capacity to high cation exchange capacity so it can retain more amount of nutrients that can be used later so uh, this is one more uh, growing media you can use again you can mix with uh, this can can be mixed with uh, uh, coco peat so sometime uh, you can mix the combination of coco peat perlite and vermiculite coco peat you can obviously you can use as uh, say ps to 1 s to 1 ratio so you can call it as a potting mix either you can use as a solely or you can mix with the coco peat perlite and vermiculite as 3s to 1s to 1 ratio just to make a potting mix so these are the few media another one media is oasis cubes oasis cubes are actually similar to the rock pool cubes but they have means, uh, means a similar property to the rock pool they are very lightweight actually and uh, they can uh uh they can absorb more water and uh, this will not get water logged you know problem with uh, rock pool is they will get water logged very easily but oasis cubes they are means uh, uh, very easily means decomposed and uh, uh, problem water logging will be not there so another one most widely used growing media is hydrotones so hydroton it is a uh, referred as a referred as a like a clay, clay or clay ball and uh, again you can see the picture in most of the hydroponic farms you will find this hydroton and it is very cheaply available you have to, you don't have to pay much uh, unlike rock wool is a little bit costly for light for mycelite they are costly as compared to that these oasis cubes and hydrotons are a bit cheaper as compared to the this uh, remaining media uh, so out of this media hydroton and coco peat you can uh, get at, uh, at cheaper prices so now uh, we have studied about means um, what are the systems which is used in hydroponics what media can be used now let's discuss about the what parameters can be studied because once you finalize the system once you finalize which is appropriate medium then we have to think about the water parameter how to maintain or how to uh, uh, maintain that quality of nutrient solution so as we are mainly working about with water in the system so main factor you have to uh, study about the ph of that water another one is tds that is a tds or electrical conductivity of water then temperature of water and the oxygen of water so these are the most important factors so we'll study little bit detail about these four factors so we know what is a ph actually ph is uh, you know it is a numeric scale starting from uh, 1 to 14 uh, c1 is a neutral and if it is less than c1 it is acidic if it is more than c1 it is a basic now why this ph is important in the hydroponics because see uh, you can first uh, you can see a chart here this side we are means most of the hydroponic growers they claim that all plants which is grown in hydroponics they required slightly acidic condition the reason is you can see the chart here see all elements or most of the elements they will be available to the plants between this 5.5 to 6.5 range see suppose this is nitrogen it will be available from even before 5.5 also it will be available after 6.5 also available but see in case of phosphorus if ph is going about 6.25 phosphorus will be not available to the plants and we know phosphorus is one of the major nutrients which is required to the plants in potassium potassium is available for uh, most of the ranges so starting from 5.75 but see again calcium calcium is again uh, required in a major quantity so if your ph is less than 6 calcium will be not available to the plants so to get calcium to your ph should be between say 6 to 6.5 so in this chart you can see all the nutrients which is avail available to the plants between the range of 5.5 to 6.5 so what will happen if you didn't maintain the ph of the nutrient solution say whenever you will add the nutrient solution obviously it's obvious as you are adding something so ph will keep increasing in case of a, uh, this nutrient solution it will go beyond 7 sometimes 7.5 8 so quickly you have to drop down if you didn't drop down that ph this what your nutrients which is there in the uh, nutrient solution they will precipitate and it will be not available to the plants and once it will be not available to the plants plant will show the deficiency symptom immediately so for that reason you have to maintain the ph between 5.5 to 6.5 again i can I, I, i repeat because of most of the nutrient which is available in this this uh, uh, very famous chart uh, you can find in a google also uh, it is a uh, widely used uh, chart 
uh, open source so uh, ph range for the most of the crops is between 5.5 to 6.5 uh, so if ph is increasing you have to drop it down if ph is drops down you have to uh, you have to uh, increase the ph ph up ph down solutions will be there which is available in the market so you can use those solutions to maintain the ph another one most important factor that is tds tds or the electrical conductivity now what does that mean what is a tds tds is you know it is total total dissolved solids it is a total dissolved solids so uh, this electrical conductivity will give you the idea about the major of the nutrient solution means how much amount of nutrient solution is there in that particular nutrient solution so if your nutrient solution is showing the low tds it means your nutrient is having low means your nutrient is having uh, less amount of nutrient if your conductivity or readings are showing very high tds it means your nutrient solution is having high amount of nutrients so different crop have different nutrition requirement at different stages so uh, so you can see uh, if you provide the high amount of uh, nutrient to the delicate cuttings uh, hello can you hear me hello yes yes you please continue sir uh, okay, okay thank you so uh, different plant they are having different nutrition capacity at different stages young plants sometimes don't require high amount of nutrient they require very minimum amount of nutrient so if you provide the uh, high amount of tds to the those younger plant plant will show the wilting systems or sometimes cuttings whatever cuttings root cuttings you can find if you will give the more amount of nutrient those again plant will show some burning symptoms so you have to find out the what is the optimum requirement of tds tds see even if whatever normal of drinking water tap water it will having roughly uh, 250 to 300 ppm of tds so uh, most of the uh, people they uh, keep asking questions me so what type of water because tds means already we are using tap water then we are having add, adding additional amount of nutrient solution so sometimes the tds will go beyond that limit so if tds is increasing plants are showing burning symptoms so how to drop down that ph if you will add the normal water to drop down to decrease the concentration still that normal water is having uh, sufficient amount of nutrients so tds will not decrease whether uh, rather it will keep increasing so what can be done if tds is keep increasing because higher tds plants are dying so in that case you have to use the ro water ro water we know in ro water all the minerals which is taken out during the reverse osmosis process so if you use the ro water to just dilute the concentration your tds or ec will come to the normal if ph of solution is low you can directly add the nutrients as uh, to uh, uh, achieve that limit uh, whatever uh, plant is required so in both way if ec is high just use ro, uh, ro water to drop it down if ec is less add nutrient solution to maintain that limit so this is how uh, tds will help us to maintain the nutrient nutrients in the uh, nutrient container so here i have given the table of uh, what will be the optimum tds and optimum ph requirement for the most of the crops you can see uh, few are the normal crops few are the exotic crops you can see the strawberry watermelons asparagus beans beetroots see tds requirement every crop is having different tds requirement so few crops they required less amount of nutrients few crops like you can say here it requires very high amount of nutrients like say mint or you can say eggplants their requirement of nutrients is very high see the lettuce uh, nutrient requirement is very low in case of lettuce so uh, in this way if you know the what is the crop requirement very easily you can maintain the tds in your nutrient solution and ph already you know it is most of the crops they prefer between 5.5 to 6.5 and just you find out which crop you are targeting you should know what is the optimum requirement of that plant uh, obviously this limit i have shown for the uh, harvestable uh, stage uh, in younger stage it will require less amount of nutrient less tds so next factor which is important in hydroponics is the temperature of water so uh, as our system uh, mainly which is composed of pvc pipes or plastic containers a uh, major problem this hydroponic grower faces heating of nutrient solution and 
ideal temperature for the hydroponics is between 16 to sorry 18 to 26 degrees celsius if you will not maintain this water temperature or nutrient tem nutrient temperature again plant will show some browning symptoms and uh, chances of uh, your plant dying is more so sometime in summer temperature rises temperature rises means water will get heated and once water will get heated your solution or whatever nutrients so will be, nutrients are there they will be precipitated out from the nutrient solutions and they will be not available to the plant so what can be done sometimes temperature will be more than 26 particularly in summers in winters temperature may come down up to say 10 11 degree in most part it will come down up to 11 degree celsius so what can be done how to maintain this amount of water temperature or nutrient uh, temperature nutrient tank temperature so if you are having uh, winter and temperature is less than 18 degrees celsius so better you can use some uh, uh, mini heaters to just warm uh, your nutrient solution uh if in particularly in summers you can you, you can use some shading material you can cover your tank with some shading material or you can uh, uh, use some say say gunny bags you just cover your container with gunny bags so it will help to cool down your uh, nutrient solution so uh, in most of the farms you, you can visit most of the farms this temperature of water is most ignorant factor actually very less hydroponic growers they are working on this uh simply there is no uh, facility to uh, drop how to drop down the temperature of the nutrient solution and this but if you want to become a successful in hydroponics you should maintain the temperature between 18 to 26 degrees celsius uh, and last important factor is the uh, aeration of the water aeration particularly uh, dissolved oxygen as i said earlier uh, for better root growth we need to provide us additional amount of uh, oxygen and uh, simply you can achieve this uh, by uh, uh, simply using the air bubbles or aquarium pumps so these are the four important factors you should able to maintain ph of the solutions which is between 5.5 to 6.5 tds as per the crop requirement you maintain the tds level uh, you have to maintain the water temperature between 18 to 26 degrees celsius and you have to provide the sufficient amount of air to the root system of the plants so three things we have seen first we have to identify the most appropriate system we have to find most appropriate growing medium and then we have to work on little bit to work on this water parameters how this problem can be solved now let's go to your, our main topic exotic vegetables why we should target exotic vegetables why not our normal vegetables because see exotic means particularly the vegetable which is originated from the foreign countries and uh, they will get means already uh, this most of the uh, foreign origin originated video uh, sorry for foreign originated uh, vegetables they have got more and more popularity in the india uh, because most of these exotic vegetables they comes under the category of superfood super mean, superfood means they are rich in vitamins they are rich in minerals um, all nutrient rich in nutrients so most of the health conscious people they prefer to consume the superfoods in their diet most of the people so at present you will find most of these rich families and uh, uh, say restaurants mcdonalds five star restaurants they have high demand for this exotic vegetables uh, and one you will find uh, this exotic vegetables they will give more and more return as compared to our normal vegetables so uh, you can find the one report in icer website they have claimed that uh, uh, the kvk lucknow they are claiming that uh, one of the farmer in that uh, periphery of the lucknow kvk he is growing some uh, exotic vegetables and he is getting benefit cost ratio as 1 as to 11.75 almost 12 so it is actually remarkable so if you convert our normal far farming to the exotic farmers so in normal farming hardly 1 1 as to 1.5 1.8 in that way we are getting benefit cost ratios in agriculture sometimes it is reaching 2 sometimes 2.5 not more than that but here in case of exotic you can see uh, already it is claim this report is there in icer website so if people they are growing exotic vegetables they are getting tremendous amount of benefit that is say 1 as to 12 it is uh, very high actually so now which crop we can target so they will give this much amount of benefit because normal uh, feed rice okay we can uh, 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 means earn something but you will not get that much amount of return using some normal feed and just you can uh, uh, feed your own family 
with those crops, but you will not get enough profit with normal cereals crops and those crops. So let's see, I have, uh, okay, one more thing. So as farmers are getting more and more profit from this exotic vegetable, so this is already replicated in the data. Data is showing that uh, exotic farming, area of exotic farming is increasing in India day by day. Before 2013, it was only 10% of polyhouses they were uh, used uh, to grow these exotic uh, vegetables. But after 2018, you can find almost 75% of new polyhouses, they are built to grow only exotic vegetables. And uh, uh, most of the uh, means, uh, flower cultivating farmers, almost 50% flower cultivating farmers, they have shifted to the exotic farming. Because in flowers, obviously they are getting some returns, but the returns is not that much as compared to the uh, exotic farming. So this is actually an uh, uh, indication that if you'll go for the exotic, we are getting, means we are supposed to get more and more benefits uh, with uh, this exotic practice in the India. So what are those vegetables which are giving us more and more returns? So see, few crops, like say, uh, uh, quick crops, like uh, zucchini, pak choy, red cabbage, and broccoli. Zucchini is uh, one of the variety of summer squash. Pak choy, is, it is again come under the Chinese cabbage variety. Red cabbage, which is rich in pigmentation. Broccoli, again, it is a cruciferi crop. Uh, most of the crops, which is grown in the winter seasons, they will give very high returns. And it is a very quick duration, hardly between 35 to uh, 50 days, you will uh, get first harvests, or uh, the crop will come to the harvesting. And mainly, uh, we didn't say, not more than two months, these crops, no crops will take more than two months. And within two months, you will get enough amount of profit if you cultivate these type of crops. Also, few crops, which is widely used as for the salad, particularly lettuce. Uh, requirement of lettuce in restaurants is very high, particularly uh, five-star hotels, three-star hotels, McDonald's, uh, lettuce like uh, green uh, romaine lettuce, butterhead lettuce, oak leaf lettuce, or lolo rosa lettuce. These type of lettuce, particularly mainly used in the burgers and those things. So it has having very high demand and market price is also very high in these type of crops. Also few crops are there, which is again used for salad purpose, but they are a long time, long term crops like lettuce icebergs. They will take around 90 days or different type of kales like uh, uh, lessinato kales or uh, red boar kales or curly kales. These type of crops, their general, in general, their growing duration is uh, around say, uh, around 75 to 90 days. This crop also, they are having a lot of demand in the markets. So we should go with this crop also. Then vegetables. All these crops we can grow with the CNFT and those things. But the long-term vegetables crop, particularly asparagus, colored capsicum, cherry tomatoes, parsley, celery, Chinese cabbage. Even you can see cucumber, basil, organo, rosemary, leek, fennel. All these crops, they can give more and more you will get seasonable price in this because after say for example say capsicum colored capsicum lot of colored capsicum varieties are available in market so they will give first harvest from three months onwards and uh, crop can grow up to six months same in case of cherry tomatoes and uh, some other crops so you will get more and more so harvesting will be almost for three months three months for the vegetative period and once after three months once it will give the first harvest after seven to eight days interval, you can uh, keep harvesting your uh, colored capsicum. And you will get considerable amount of price in the market for these crops. Uh, same in case of cucumber, basil, organo. These are the long-term crops you can keep harvesting and uh, they will give continuous fruits. So crops are good. But main problem is how to market your crops. Because if you are producing the crops, but if you are not able to sell, then you will be in loss. So first you should find how to sell your products. So two major things you have to keep in mind. If you are going to sell your product, you have to find B2B market. B2B means that is a business to business. So first you are producing the uh, 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 vegetables. That vegetables you can sell to the Horeca. Horeca means either you can sell to the hotels, restaurants, or cafeteria. Or you can give, go with the resellers. You can sell your produce, whatever exotic produce to the different malls because different uh, like Reliance Fresh, they are giving quality of, uh, quality vegetables, fresh vegetables. So you can directly contact to those type of malls. Also, you can go to the market yards. 
you can reach out to the institutions you can go to the exporters those who are ready to export in neighboring countries or you can go with the b2c market b2c market is direct business to customer so in that case you should have uh, your own shops and you can directly uh, sell your product, produce to the customers or you can start uh, the e-commerce because nowadays you can see in most of the cases e-commerce is a, see in case of food in case of the goods e-commerce is very common people they prefer to sit in a home and just simply they will place the orders and uh, the parcel will get delivered to their uh, doorsteps so simply you can start e-commerce business or you can keep stalls in your uh, weekly mandi sabji mandi or bazaar or in corporate societies or you can place some different counters at uh, different locations so in that only you have to find the market uh, because these are the exotic crops you will not get buyer in normal market normal sabji mandi you will not get a buyer for the exotic crops you have to find the, some contacts particularly these hotels resellers malls otherwise you will produce the quality uh, vegetables but normal marginal farmers they cannot I mean, afford to buy this type of product so better you have to contact these hotels restaurants and cafeterias uh then one more means, uh, most common question is when you are thinking about start about hydroponics so what should be the cost most basic questions and generally uh, uh, when we are discussing about the disadvantages of hydroponics this cost of hydroponics or a setup which comes at a first level because initial investment is very high in case of hydroponics cultivation so uh, it is not necessary that always you need to go for the high five fancy structures few vegetables you can grow with simple say net only and for that uh you have to pay around uh, 10 to 15 lakhs per acre onwards again this value may highly fluctuate uh, depending on the uh, places you are living and depending on the type of material you are using for the structure so if you are uh, you want to use the open ventilated polyhouse you have to spend around 35 to 40 lakhs of uh, rupees uh, per acre and uh, you want to use high tech polyhouses like climate control polyhouses you have to pay around 60 to 70 lakhs per acre again value may fluctuate Uh, obviously on uh, uh, quality of material and where you are situated actually so in that way this is a uh, rough estimation i have given not exact so these things you have to keep in mind so which said but problem with said net is you cannot grow the vegetable year around only seasonal crops you can grow in the uh, said nets uh, but in climate control polyhouses you can manipulate the uh, uh, environment and you can grow suppose winter crops you can grow throughout the year also suppose you are having a uh, high market of lettuce you can control the uh, uh, temperature inside that polyhouse and you can grow the lettuce year around but in case of said net that facility will be not there so you can able to produce only for that particular season suppose winter is coming you can produce hydroponics only in that particular winter season so this is a problem uh, problem will come so if you want to go for era around always choose, for, choose the climate control polyhouses if you want to go for only seasonal vegetables then uh, said net is okay uh, no issue uh, simply you can grow uh, exotic few exotic vegetables with said net uh, said net also now how to become successful because many you will find many hydroponic growers in the uh, uh, market few they started very well and uh, later they didn't got in a amount of success so what is the main thing before starting your hydroponics you have to do some little bit market analysis market analysis in this is actually what is required in the market what you can sell at what rate you can sell this market analysis you have to do prior to install your system or prior to go into the business of hydroponics once you study the market on that basis you have to choose the crop you have to choose the system and then you have to go for the hydroponics another one problem with hydroponics is Uh, as a beginning obvious uh, as a beginner in hydroponics uh, always you have to go with the standardized chemical which is available in market but once you, you start from the pilot to commercial one you should learn to prepare your own solution otherwise you have to keep spending money on the market chemicals and those chemicals are very costly actually so you should prepare your own recipes nutrient recipes uh, you should prepare your uh, own recipes and uh, one most important thing is always you should start with the small pilot product you should first practice it 
just bring small simple setup in your home in kitchen garden you just practice it and then only you enter in the commercial one otherwise most of the cases what happens people directly they will go for the big scales and sometime due to lack of practice lack of knowledge knowledge uh, they will get a failure in the hydroponics and last one you need a lot of patience you should be patient otherwise see uh, if you don't have patience sometime you will get failed some not sometime but most of the times as a beginner you will get the failure in the hydroponics because you have to uh, in you will find out literatures and those things you will not get complete guide sir some lacunas will be there that lacunas you have to find while practicing only once you practice then only you will get sufficient idea then you enter into the commercial scale and why we get failures in hydroponics the main reason is outsourcing of nutrients so nutrient whenever you will ask to the uh, any hydroponic supplier so what is the uh, nutrient or what is the nutrient composition they are providing because simply they will provide two bottles to you solution a and solution b they will say solution a is a macronutrient solution b is a micronutrient but if you will ask what is the proportion of the nutrients in that nutrient they will not tell they will say simply it is a say it is a top secret we cannot reveal the content so what happens we have to pay more and more amount to buy those uh, nutrient solutions and for commercial you need lot of nutrients actually so you should start combination means you should prepare your own nutrients so you can spend little bit amount of or you can save on the nutrients how much you are spending in the uh, uh, how you are spending to the markets you can save almost say more than 50% you can save on the nutrients if you try to learn to prepare your own recipes uh another one problem is most of the growers what they will do uh, they will grow the vegetables once vegetable is grown then they will go for the market study at that time demand of that product may not be there that person may not get buyers they may he may not get customers so before entering into the business only people should uh, study about the markets and uh, nowadays a uh, lot of people they get influenced by watching youtube videos uh, youtube videos you will get lot of information but still so many lacunas were there you will not get those, those technical things you will get or uh, you will come to know after practicing only so these are the few reasons uh, for the failures in the hydroponic system then okay so this is uh, all about the um, uh, hydroponic system and here uh, in century university odisha we are working on little bit uh, for the demo project we are having a frame structure you can see it here uh, a frame hydroponic structures generally students prefer to do practicing and to grow the, their own vegetables how those vegetables can be grown in the hydroponics also we do have some uh, hydroponic fodder in structures so here uh, we are producing uh, almost a 200 kg of fodder per day uh, for the livestock So these these are the some small units in our campus. Uh, also, some students you can see some uh, bucket systems. They are working or they are practicing on the different hydroponic systems. And it is for just a university purpose. We have set up one some small labs. And these are the some pictures of the uh, some few different hydroponic farms from the Australia. So here you can see uh, not necessary. Here you only seed net is there, no control structures. So you can grow your vegetables only with seed net also no need to fancy structure here you can say strawberry is there but uh, here glass house there was there and here you can say some poly houses are there so you can grow with hydroponics with seed net you can go with control conditions or you can go with simple poly houses so uh, that's it from my side so uh, uh, thank you very much uh, dr nitin uh, i hope i have covered most of the things uh, so uh, if any questions are there i am ready to answer okay thank you dr gaypard uh, and uh, before some minutes our respected dr chandrakant sharma sir dean faculty of agriculture and principal college of agriculture have joined so i would request uh, dean sir uh, to share his views dean sir please thank you dr nitin sorry i think uh, i missed the session due to some urgency And I think I've been very much shocked. What things have been done up to the mark? Because uh, something which has to be done in that level is very much essential in the case of the hot potato. 
and uh, exotic vegetables are the good supplement whenever we are thinking for that. So Dr. Gaikwad has given a lot to the audience. I think they have been the in the benefit for that purpose. In the, with these words, good luck for the best. Yes. Sorry. Okay. So, so may, uh, some questions are from audience end. Uh, does hydroponics farming produce harmful chemicals? Uh, well, actually, a uh, lot of people they will keep asking questions because we are using nutrient solution uh, in the hydroponic solution. So, this question is common actually. That uh, whether whatever produce we are getting uh, is uh, uh, harmful, uh, whether this uh, whatever produce we are getting or vegetables whether they are having harmful chemicals or not. Actually, it is not, because in most of the hydroponic farms, or rather in all hydroponic farms, all water-soluble fertilizers are used. So, uh, it will be residue fee. It will not have any uh, harm to them. It will use only water-soluble fertilizers. So, there is no issue with uh, harmful chemicals. It is uh, completely safe. Uh, Okay. Can we set up such type of hydroponics unit at uh, in the open environment if we have some financial constraints? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, already, I guess, already I have heard this in the previous photograph. Yes, we can go to the open. The problem is, if we are going with open, you can grow only signal crops. So you cannot produce the era. You can see this open part. So these sectors of farm will find in our area. Only with sediment. Only with sediment. But the problem is, once winter is over, you cannot go up. So you have to wait for next winter and uh, then you can. So if you are growing your plants in open condition, you will be fine, but you will get only seasonal uh, Depending on the climatic conditions, uh, you will get only seasonal. But here are production will not. But yes, but you can develop it. Okay, I have a question. Uh, can yes. we use uh, vermicompost in the hydroponics? Well, <laughs> uh, actually, as we have discussed, a uh, lot of uh, material like a lock, uh, rock pool or uh, say, you know, pit we have seen, uh, we have seen perlite, vermiculite, they are most suited. But in problem with vermicompost is, vermicompost is organic and, you know, organic means, uh, vermicompost actually, it is excreta of earthworm. It means uh, chances of foreign materials are very high there. And are some, so many microbes will be there and if you are using this microbes and some foreign material so simply you are inviting some unnecessary trouble in your so uh, your plant may be susceptible to another uh, because of it obviously because of this for example you cannot deny the fact that it will be having a lot of a lot of foreign substances so uh, if you want uh, trial for the Different to from other uh, 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 your plant will not get any day taste and disease. Uh, problem for me is simply you are right. Though uh, few people they mix for me compost in a perfect in a suitable combination, which they uh, will add some amount of for me compost, peat, perlite, mixture of for me compost, everything. But I'm uh, not for me. Okay. Uh, I would request uh, Honorable uh, Dr. Sharma sir, Dean sir, uh, to have some uh, remarks at the end. I request uh, Dean sir uh, to share some remarks in the end of the session and uh, guide us. Hello. Hello. Uh, some issues is maybe there. Uh, may I request uh, Dean sir to share re remarks, please, for the session. Okay, some issues are at the end uh, of the respected Dean sir, maybe. Uh, I am very much thankful uh, to Dr. Guy Kwad for sharing uh, uh, good presentation with uh, enlightening remarks and uh, he enriched us 
with the thoughts regarding the hydroponic system how it works and uh, really good ideas and basic ideas what a uh, enthusiast person wants to start his own hydroponic unit how can he go ahead or uh, how can he start and what are the things and basic aspects that he has enlightened us uh, very much thankful to dr gaikwad uh, in the end i would like to thank respected dr uh, professor chandrakant sharma sir dean faculty of agriculture and principal college of agriculture for uh, providing us uh, guidance for organizing such a you know to topic uh, webinar and uh, in the end i would uh, thank dr uh, on behalf of myself and uh, college of agriculture and parul university for uh, uh, providing your valuable time and sharing your ideas and thoughts with our students teachers and all the audience who are uh, available online on the facebook media also thank you dr gaikwad uh, with thank the you. prior permission of uh, dean sir i declare the session over thank you thank you thank you thank you very much dr ubale thank you oh, okay